What is going on, party people? We are live in this mother trucker in full effect. My name is Jared Adams, a.k.a. The Buckness, and we are still defending hardstyle since day zero. And today, I wanted to kind of get all y'all together, because I've been wanting to do this shit for like, I don't know, six weeks already, and <laughs> I wanted to do this on day two, honestly. But I wanted to spend a little more time into kind of understanding and working with the Barefoot Footprint O2s that I've been working on um, basically for the past two months now. And, you know, I've been ha I've had these Gen like 8020s for a hot minute now. Um, and, you know what, don't get me wrong, I'm still keeping them. Uh, so, uh, I wanted to just go over the lay of the land of kind of how they sound like, you know, and then I'll kind of give a little shitty live audio demo. Now, it's not going to actually, re actually replicate, you know, because this mic isn't a calibrated flat mic. However, it will give you kind of a little fidelity comparison on what it may sound like, at least on a small, rough scale. So, um, the Barefoots, man, I mean, their drivers are six and a half inches as a sub, dude, but they put out that low end. I mean, that low end is tight, tight, tight. Um, I came from the Neumann KH310s, which are 8-inch drivers, plus a, a 805 sub, which is a 10-inch sub with a crossover of 120 hertz. Um, of course, I was in a bigger room, but I, when I had the Neumanns in here without the sub, um, I was just getting all kinds of phasing issues because of the horizontally playing speakers. Um, I was just getting some weird responses based on my room size, and um, for the price point, man, of 3 k I mean, I couldn't find any other better competitor and I wanted to kind of save a little money, you know, and take some in return in order to cross over on some new pair. So I had decided to um, pick these, you know, and uh, I, I don't regret it right now. And um, so uh, they are not ported. They're sealed boxes. They're reflex drivers. I mean, the mid-range and the tweeter design on them are fucking unique as shit. You know, they're not your standard you know, dynamic, you know, soft dome tweeters. Um, however, um, they are really, they are really, a, have, they do have a good high fidelity to them. Um, you know, there are some times where I'm like, man, this almost sounds too good in here, and I don't know if this will translate well, but you know what, after working with them and kind of understanding them, really, I mean, it really comes back to, and I've done videos on this before, understanding your room, understanding what you're using, understanding the material, and for hard style, you know, this is basically all going to be for hardstyle. Um, you know what? They do the job when I have, you know, and you got to have multiple references, man. I mean, I'm using those, the uh, 8020s, and I recently got these uh, LCD Xs where they're the closed backs, but I also have these mother truckers. They're interchangeable to open back. Anyhow, I'm going to do another video for that. But, um, I mean, these barefoots in here, they're solid, man. You know what? They, they supposedly have a roll-off at 33 hertz, but at 30 hertz, it's a negative 3, to 3 dB cut. That ain't much at all, man. And truthfully, I have a little bit of a high pass on it at 38 hertz because any lower, I just don't want to hurt these guys, especially working with distorted low bass. And um, even for this room, you know, I, I feel that um, that's, that's a you know prime cutoff. I can translate well. So... Um, I also wanted to go into a remix that I'm working on and finishing um, my remix of Wild Style's Keep Your Head Up. And I've been trying to do this for a hot minute, but I wanted to get the live drums right because I have my dad on the track. I have one of his friends, Barry Warsaw, on it, and I got my dad doing live drums. I got video clips of that coming up, and um, Barry Warsaw is on live bass for the breakdown. So, um, you know what? I kind of wanted to do, uh, go over the project after just playing it back one time, so... I think what I'm going to do is, I know, kind of ghetto, but play it back right now in here with my little rinky-dink microphone, and uh, hopefully we can get at least somewhat of a relevant, uh, you know, maybe. We'll see what happens. Without further ado. I'm going to play them on the Jennies first, out of the bear first. I'll leave it on the barefoot.
My daddy on the drums, Barry Warsaw on the bass, the Buckness on the refs. No, they are not game matched, and I apologize for that, but there's a ground loop in this house, and if I turn the Genelix analog up anymore, it's a little noisy. with the Jennies first. All right, so just a little lay of the land of a quick overview, man. Pros and cons of both um, the barefoots. So, I mean, I'm just going to start straight off the bat. The bass is tight, 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 tight. Um, that kick and bass relationship fucking is pretty damn on point. I mean, you can discern through the air really what is being translated through the speakers. The high-end detail from the 1K to 20K, man. I mean, seriously, up to 20K, man. You can hear that little baby sizzle. Um, you can hear the details, the fine details that are being presented within certain sound designs. Um, I will also say that the transient responses with compression and, you know, attack and release times are quite discernible, you know, for those who may not even how to use compressors well or still unsure. I mean, you know, good speakers will be able to help. I mean, I'm not saying go out and spend $3,000 on speakers. However, you will be able to hear your work. Um, some cons I will share is that, I mean, just generally, whenever there's too much bass in a room, for me, I always feel like it almost sounds too good. And, um, you know, sometimes the low end may not translate on smaller systems, smaller earbuds, uh, the car, you know. So there's that, you know. And with these barefoots, even with the three different EQ settings that it's provided with, still can be sometimes considered to me a little bit high fidelity and sometimes makes everything almost, like I said, still sound too good. However, they are a good working tool when it comes to, I mean, being able to tell what details are there or even aren't there. So it's just good to tra get, get another monitoring system to translate on, whether it is earbuds, cheap headphones, your laptop, your phone, your car, your friend's car. Fucking, yeah, you get the picture. So that, that's, that's still always crucial no matter what. Um, however, I mean, for the price that they're competing with, to me, the technology, the design, the weight, the placement, it kind of just really stood out to me. So I, I, I think Barefoot fucking got their hands in the honeypot pretty well with that one. Now, the Genelex, man, I mean, there's a reason why I'm keeping those. I mean, their lower mids, upper bass is just translates really well, and it just spits out that information really well even on these small fucking four inch cones i mean they just do a good job especially with hard dance man i could see why a lot of you know studio owners 
um, choose Genelec because of the way they translate hard kicks. And that is just something really special about him. And, I mean, this is just based on my own experience with listening to electronic music of my own understanding. Um, you know, some small cons is that sometimes some distortion details may not be completely present that I can hear in the barefoot. Some of the, uh, you know, some frequencies get a little washed within these smaller ones, at least, that I'm using. Um... You know, and if I really just put an image in my head of a larger Genelec system, it would seem that maybe the frequencies wouldn't be so washed up. However, um, there are some, you know, details within, literally, a clip distortion and, um, you know, end game mastering kind of stuff. I mean, of course, I'm doing my own. I'm not going to try to pay no other engineer to do it, man. I mean, it's all a good learning process anyway that I can't exactly fully hear on these little Genelex. And of course, I mean, they're small four-inch cones um, that I would truly prefer to hear the barefoots over them. Now, the fact that they don't put out a lot of bass helps me understand level response and if something in the higher frequencies is not or is being too present or too hidden I mean with the higher fidelity barefoot sometimes you kind of get lost in the mix I literally have to go outside and take a walk listen to birds listen to cars listen to horns honking and just get a sense of reality again and I do that probably every 30 minutes I'm at least walking in the living room or listening to outside or hanging out with the cat or something so a little off topic but when it comes to the pros and cons the pros outweigh the cons definitely when it comes to at least keeping these speakers i definitely want to do a review of the atcs again when i bring them back in here but for now i'm going to continue to work in the barefoots um and there are times where i'm spending hours on the gentle x2 and i don't even turn on the barefoots just because i want to hear what's going on on a smaller system because it just kind of it's a little more natural grip of reality and kind of realistic of what you know, maybe the home end user may be using. So, with that, the Jennies are here to stay. The Barefoots are definitely here to stay. They're just way fun to produce on. And, um, you know, I, I, I think it's also just the human ear condition, right? You know, you listen to something for too long, something may get lost in the storm with figuring out what's right, what isn't. You know, but then again, you know, you just got to have fun with it. So, um, hopefully that's enough detail of what I think about both speakers and certainly the barefoots. Uh, you know, I go into the frequency ranges real fast, you know. Bass, awesome. Upper bass, lower mids. Eh, sometimes I get lost, you know, really. I really, really do. And given there are some peaks and dips in this room, I kind of just have to roll with what is translated through here and then this is why multi-referencing is important man because every room is going to have a problem you know speaker placement is always going to be an issue boundary reflection is certainly a table is going to be your issue and um so i i still get confused on the 100 to 500 hertz sometimes because i don't know if it's too much too warm not enough uh, over detailed, you know, my working on the, the micro details on a macro level or not. And is that making all in all good music sound pleasing to the ear, you know, on a majority scale? Of course, I'm having fun with it. However, when you are pushing out a product, right, you know, you kind of do want to tailor it to other human beings. Um, or if your dogs and cats like hard style, that's cool too. All right, lower, upper mids, upper mids, 1 to 3K, you know. Yes, definitely. You can tell, you can really space things out in, like, the six frequency bands, you know. You know, uh, what was it? Mids and upper mids. Yes and no, sometimes. Uh, and, you know, I think, I think that, I'm able to tell some of those micro details in the ATCs 
a little more and I really will go into that in the future. But I still have a little more time to work with these. You know, it's only been two months. You know, some people have speakers for 10, 15 years. So um, I think as long as I get to know them better, I'll have a better understanding of what's going on. Um, lower treble to, you know, mid treble. So like three to five K, the presence region. Yes, definitely. You can tell what's going on and you can hear a lot of details in vocals, drums, uh, keyboards, synthesizers, and um, kick beater attacks. And then when you really get into like the 5K and up, I mean, there it's just like, yeah, it's, it's very, you could really fine tune things and get into the nitty gritty of things. But then again, when you're listening to those frequencies at a constant level for a period of time, no matter what, if you're focusing in on that, I think, you know, in my experience that you kind of do get fatigued. And with higher fidelity speakers, you're you're searching, right? You're kind of just searching sometimes, you know, of like you're digging, right? You know, is it apparent? Is it not? That's kind of always the question, right, as a producer. This is why taking breaks, knowing your systems and multi-referencing is important. So um, I just wanted to go through that really quick, you know, and for the Gentle X, um, like I said, you know, the, the leveling, especially because they're smaller speakers on each of those frequency bands I described, is pretty prevalent. I just think the main differences between the two, you know, on, on a large scale, are the fine details within each frequency band. And so, like I said, they're here to stay, and I, I still check on headphones for that. Um, some of those details that I may be missing from the two... And especially low, low, and like 50 and below. So, that will be a review for another day. I think now it's time to actually get into the Keep Your Head Up, the Buckness Remix, Ableton Project. Let's check it out. <laughs> All right, um, I do want to open up this project, but I also want to turn down my mic now that it's in front of me. Just so it's not blaring and I'm not over-modulating and distorting all your eardrums, I also have to um, change this to headphones, and hopefully I'm going to check some line level to make sure this stream is still going to you. I love these Audis LCDX Odyssey, whatever you however you want to pronounce it, man. Um, I've had these for a month. I actually traded the focal clears for these, and I they came with the closed backs, and the dude had some laser cut, fucking um, laser cut interchangeable panels to change them to open backs, and they serve its purpose. I mean, like right now, when I'm on an airplane, when I've only taken one airplane, don't worry, you COVID crazies, um, and I kept myself safe as fuck. So um, now. Uh, they've, I mean, they basically, they come in handy. And truthfully, I kind of prefer the open back side just because of that low-end freedom. But uh, enough about that. We'll go on that another day. Here's a project. Uh, let's see if we get some level. Let me change off the screen real fast, mate. Uh, is this going to play to you guys? Yeah. All right. Good old static, huh? That'll change in about 10 seconds. Let's see, we got hardware, buffer. All right, we're already at a high buffer, so I'm gonna just let the static play. So this is my project of Wild Styles Keep Your Head Up, remix by DeBuckness. So um, I'm pretty stoked on this. I've been working on this for like probably almost a year. I was still in the new studio, so at least a good year. Um, we're still in the old studio, rather. Uh, I got uh, here. Let's just let's just go from the top, man.
also saw some comments, and I have finally realized that there is a delay. No, I did not set that up for this mic. Oh, well, we're in a new space now. So, you know what? Can't stop the stream now. Can't stop the party. So, um, anyhow, uh, hopefully this, this little overview doesn't deem useless. So, uh... Yeah, man, I got this baseline going at six layers. Uh, I kind of just kept the layers, man. I got this obsession of just kind of keeping things in line because I do not want to completely flatten in case I don't like it. But maybe keep looking at it might keep me from, uh, uh, might keep me obsessed. But uh, I'll just give a little quick shebang of what, what's going on. in this screech man i mean it's just so unique sounding and i am ah, i don't know i like it it's different since you know it's not your typical hard style screech so i, I that's also why i like it <laughs> one little thin top layer with three inches of raw raw pumpkin um i have also this one from the back with three more raw which sounds like I think I had four layers on here at one point where they were just kind of muddy up the mix, and uh, I kind of figured. So I had a few other layers on top of here as well, but they were kind of clouding up the mix, especially that 1 to 5K. I totally remember deleting them. And you know what? These two just keep it enough as is. And I've done enough fine tuning and like a point DB. give a quick little overview of how the drumming session went down so I had him record a full kit and we had mic'd it up with some drum mics that he had and stuff you know and we've kind of gotten some additional mics in between now and then you know I'm using this slate stuff you know and their emulations are just awesome I love their stuff but um, I also kind of had to really had to then go in and add some digital kicks unfortunately however I did still keep some of the um, original files and we used uh, one of those the AKG D12 slate mod and then one of them is um, the D112B slate mod so I did record with this little pencil mic that I'm using right here and you're probably gonna see a delay but whatever this one and um, we ended up I ended up keeping those audio files and this is kind of what that sounds like Super simple, but that adds enough, enough top end to. Yep.
Black hate on that hate on that steel drum, yo. silence or anything like that and any of these layers i don't think no i am using serum and vps avenger i don't know if you guys have heard of that uh basically vengeance sound uh has created their own synth and you guys may know vengeance samples but this thing is a powerhouse man it's awesome i mean it's sample and wavetable based so uh, I suggest you guys go try that out and have fun with that. Um, also, Slate Digital's layer, um, they have created their own wavetable-based synth, and that thing is a powerhouse as well. It's wavetable and sample-based. Uh, so you guys, if you guys do have the Slate package, I mean, I don't know. I love everything that Slate's given out and continue to give out so far. You know what? And for me, 15 bucks a month. It's it's worth it's fucking worth it, especially when you're invested into the mic system. Uh, to me, it's it's I don't know, man. I have way so much fun with it that uh, I'm keeping it. And I guess I'll just go a little bit about what each layer sounds like. Why not? <laughs> Why not? Let's stop here and just go through this whole shebang. So I had this old gated kick. I, I don't know why they call it gated kick. I'm trying to still understand the terminology and the technicality of why gated. I mean, the early hard style kicks. The early hard style mother trucking kicks. Yeah. I can just listen to a whole set of that for an hour. <laughs> You 
would almost think you would hear this kick thing kind of more, huh? At least a punch a bit. But you know what? You kind of mesh sounds and you add phase pretty much. Then you know what? You're kind of going to be um, served with whatever they serve you, man. And um, that's when the barefoots really came in handy was trying to fine tune mix these buggers. I think in here is, it's got a little drive in it or something. That's what's giving it. Yeah, that's what's going on. It's got some drive. Um, yeah, I think fine tuning some of the wave positions, the little other parameters, the voicing, the slight detuning, and then of course the filtering, um, that came in a lot of handy with the barefoots. And, uh, yeah, what? Uh, this, 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 um, I did, I did set, set a, a delay. delay. It's, it's funny. funny. Oh, oh well. well. Here we are. Back in action, folks. So, this is the whole kick drum, the whole shebang, and yeah. start with it sounds interesting <laughs> oh I must have taken the word keep let's see let's see what happens yep that's from the word keep how cool is that that plus some Ableton corpus and resonator and uh, I don't even think the oh yeah there's a little ring modulation and then of course the EQ how's that huh Cuba in contact if you got complete. I think this is like a hi hat thing going on. Oh, where you at? Yeah. Gotta love heaviosity shit, man. Yeah, but you can't go wrong with that. Alright, anyhow. Just had to. using a drum set here but I did not want it yeah dude what oh my gosh even some of that I love this this whole little kit man I I go from this kit to a couple other kits and I just drag them from project to project and I literally just open up each little sound see some of these are muted because I didn't decide to use them and I just modulate the hell out of them. I modulate the envelopes. And um, I mean, this one doesn't really have much going on, which is cool. This one might have a little more. Yeah, man. I mean, you just you mess around, dude. Serum is just, it's its all renowned. It's all renowned, powerful stuff. It's been around for a hot minute. I'm sure, 90% of producers, 99% of producers have used it at least once. Um, and I literally just layer shit and, and pitch them. And that's what goes down, man, in the Buckness Labs. Yeah. What is this guy? Tight. And then you kind of play around with that and you pitch him up and down. I mean, you kind of keep him in the same key. Uh, from octave to octave, and you get a little something like this. Good times are had by all. Yeah. So, if we kind of put that back into sequence...
that's been the name of the game, dude. This is one of, I have three remixes fully finished that I haven't put out yet, and I am going to put this out this week. And I have some giveaways that I have coming out, and so um, I ordered some beanies. Actually, they're coming as a gift. Thank you, Mama. Uh, she's got a great uh, promotional item person that, there's all these lanyards, cards, beanies, hats, cups, USBs, you name it, for her own company that she works with. Oh, hello. That's what happens when you come up with ideas on the side and you don't use them. They come in a minute later. So, uh, as cool as that sounded, I actually am taking that, that portion without the vocal and turning it into another track, which I will be sharing in the near future. Um, it's another old school hard style remix, but we're not talking about that today. We're talking about the wild styles. Keep your head up. So, um, basically with this track, uh, I'm going to post this track and then I'm going to do some giveaways later this week. So, uh, that's the name of the game. I'm sorry if there's been a delay in audio and stuff or delay in audio and video, but I swear I thought I calibrated that beforehand. Uh, however, I will share that um, these barefoots have been a tremendous help with these. And you know what? It's just fucking nice to be in a nice sounding room. I love it, man. I, I love doing the deal. I love making music. I love sharing it. But, uh, you know, as like most artists, man, we get self-conscious sometimes and we're like, I don't know if it's good enough. But you know what? I think it's it's pretty fair to say that I'm pretty proud of this track. I mean, especially with this bass line and screech line, I just got to go back to the beginning real quick, you know? Oh, man that's the name of the game and uh i really hope you guys did like the remix and stuff like that i mean it's a pretty hefty project i don't know how many tracks are in here i mean if i really kind of narrowed everything down it'd probably be like 60 or 70 um, but there are multiple layers going on and stuff and as you could see it's a pretty wild palette so that's coming out this week um i think i'm gonna call it for the stream and i hope you guys got some fair information uh yeah, new music coming your way real, real soon. Party people, key yo, head up. The Bucket is remix featuring Johnny B, my daddy on the drums, and Barry Warsaw, his homie on the bass, live in full effect. We doing it. We're going to keep doing it. We ain't stopping. We ain't stopping. So, have a good one. <laughs>